In this video, I will introduce you to Embedded Linux. Here, we will try to understand what is Embedded Linux, where is Embedded Linux used, and why you should learn Embedded Linux. The first question that we want to address here is, what is Embedded Linux? Well, to simply put, Embedded Linux is a version of Linux designed for embedded systems such as embedded computers, mobile phones and other electronic devices that require a low footprint operating system. Linux is mainly used as general purpose operating system for PC hardware with Intel x86 architecture such as Ubuntu, the one that I'm using now. Linux quickly evolved into a server operating system providing infrastructure for web servers and networking services. So if you see the Linux is mainly used in the computers and the servers for and networking devices. So recent advancement made in semiconductor technology have helped to overcome the hurdles of uh, hurdles for adoption of Linux in embedded systems. So what are these hurdles? Some of these hurdles are availability of inexpensive and long-term reliable flash memory devices which provide the necessary mass storage for the file system. The next hurdle is the powerful system on chip designs has which has one or more multiple general purpose CPU cores with MMU and peripherals and peripheral devices on a single chip replacing the microcontroller in embedded applications. The Linux requires MMU, the memory management unit, which were not available in the earlier embedded devices or embedded microcontrollers. So in these days we have a system on chip or, or called SOCs which hosts or which has MMUs which brings the capability to run Linux on these SOCs. Recently, we are seeing an exponential growth in adoption of Linux for embedded devices. There are many reasons for this rapid growth of embedded Linux. Some of these are the first thing is royalties. It's unlike traditional proprietary operating systems like QNX or Autos, Linux has been deployed without any royalties. The hardware support. Linux supports a vast variety of hardware devices including all major, com major and commonly used CPU architecture like ARM, Intel x86, MIPS and PowerPC in their respective 32-bit as well as 64-bit variants. Networking. Linux supports a large variety of networking protocols besides the, the TCP IP which is which is always available in the Linux. Virtually any other protocol on any physical medium that is implemented. Also Linux provides modularity. A Linux OS stack is composed of many different software packages so engineers can customize the stack to make it exactly fit their applications. What it means here is you know, for embedded system, you don't need everything that Linux offers. So embedded systems are targeted to specific application and you can have modules or stacks which are required for your application. The next thing is scalability. The Linux scales from systems with only one CPU and limited resources to systems featuring multiple CPUs with many cores, large memory footprints, several networking interfaces, and much more. Source code. The score, as you know, the source code for Linux kernel as well as all software packages comprising a Linux OS stack is openly available. That's called open source. Developer support. 
Because of its openness, Linux has attack, attracted a huge number of active developers and those developers have quickly built support for new hardware. So for example, you have, uh, so normally when there is a new hardware, so quickly developers adapt Linux core and or quickly developers port the Linux for that particular hardware. The commercial support, an increasing number of hardware and software vendors, including all semiconductor manufacturers, as well as many independent software, many independent software vendors are now offering support for Linux through products and services. Tooling. Linux provides large number of tools for software development ranging from compilers for virtually any programming language to a steadily growing number of profiling and performance measurement tools important for embedded systems development so which we will use in our development for embedded systems well now we know that what is embedded linux where is embedded linux used the phone that you're holding could be powered by a flavor of embedded Linux called Android. It could be TV that you're watching or a smartphone that you wear or a tablet, PC that you hold. Any of these devices could be running embedded Linux. The TV, for example, for instance, uh, if you, a TV is Android TV, yes, it invariably learns Linux as Android is a flavor of embedded Linux. Well, with the rise of Internet of Things, there is a great need for devices which are, which are to be smart and need to be connected with the Internet. For this, you need an operating system that's powerful, configurable and has small footprint. Yes, the embedded Linux is the answer. Some devices that are embedded Linux include, as I said, it could be your phone, it could be your smart TV, it could be your wireless routers, the tablet PCs, navigation devices, some of the navigation devices that you can find in the cars as an infotainment. So there are many, many other applications of embedded Linux that you'll find day in and day out. There are other industrial and consumer electronic equipment. Well, to run any flavor of embedded Linux, it usually requires the processor to contain a memory management unit with sufficient RAM and ROM. So in general, we classify embedded devices in three categories according to their size. The first category is as a small. It means a small systems that are categorized by low power C low powered CPU with a minimum of four MB of RAM normally nor and nand flash rather than a real rom and between 8 and 16 mbf ram so these are considered as a small devices the medium sized systems are characterized by medium powered cpu with a 32 mb or more of rom almost always nor flash or even NAND flash on some systems able to execute code from block addressable NAND flash memory devices and 64 to 128 MB of RAM and the large system and the next category is large large systems are characterized by a powerful CPU or a collection of CPUs combined with a large amount of RAM and permanent storage so you can run embedded linux smoothly on medium and large systems given that it has mmu with sufficient ram and ram rom and sufficient frequency to run it a little bit faster in recent years you can see more and more devices are made using socs which has mmu it means memory management unit with sufficient ram rom and frequency this has led to adoption of embedded Linux to power these devices. Well, now we know that little bit of embedded Linux and where it is used. 
the next question that comes is why you should learn embedded Linux? So well with the rise of in Internet of Things or IoT and adoption of embedded Linux in more devices, there is a great need for professionals who can build things using embedded Linux. So with the skills to build and run Linux on those embedded devices, it opens a plethora of opportunities to contribute and, and to grow in the industry. Well, I'm here to help you in mastering embedded Linux. In this project, I will take you through the necessary theory and practical examples that you, so that you can learn, build and run embedded Linux on your device. Thanks for watching. If this video helped you in learning, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, share with anyone who is interested to learn more about embedded Linux and Internet of Things. Leave a comment below for any feedback or discussion.